Father, may we preach the word of the Lord today. Pray that you save the soul that's near as hell and give everybody to fall in love with you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. He said, I do set my bow in the cloud. Now, from a natural point of view, the rainbow is a natural effect of a natural cause. It's nature. It always has been and always will be seen where water falls, showers of rain, and sunshine exists. It always has been and always will be seen where water falls, showers of rain, and sunshine exists. You don't see rainbows at night. Sunlight, the light has to produce, is a part of producing the rainbow. That ought to say something to you right there. Amen. The multicolored semicircle calls by the rays of the sun on drops of water has no doubt been an enjoyable sight since the original creation of clouds, rain, and sun. That's what's necessary. You've got to have clouds, rain, and sun. And it has been an enjoyable, comforting sight. You remember a few years ago, when was it when we initially uh, took back the rainbow? 2015, during uh, a Shiloh conference, FAM, FAM conference, thank you all, and Bishop Darrell Hines spoke, and we saw a phenomenon during that, the next day, there was a double rainbow. I still have the pictures because you all sent them to me, and I took them over this, the church. God put a, God, God gave it his approval, a double rainbow sign. And just a few days ago, there was another rainbow. Right after we began to talk about this, and uh, during the AIM conference, the saints sent me pictures because it was sunshiny down in Spartanburg. During the AIM conference, a rainbow, we had already started talking about it, uh, during Christ Pride Month, um, appeared. And, and I believe from a spiritual standpoint, it was God setting his approval on our efforts. Amen. The true meaning here is of the rainbow, as surely as the eternal rainbow is an effect of sunshine and rain, so this earth and natural life shall surely be an eternal effect of God's covenant with all living creatures. Succinctly put, the fact that we are here is proof or is the result of the covenant that God made in our text. The fact that succeeding generations have come on the scene and died and gone off the scene and to bring us to where we are and to when the Lord shall come. All of those things that have taken place since God made this covenant. None of those things could have transpired had our God not been a God of his word. This is why I say we can't dismiss the rainbow uh, for had there not been this covenant, we would have never gotten to the cross. And I shared with you Thursday night that th this particular Noadic covenant was one of uh, 
of only three covenants in the Bible in the Old Testament that was made that was given a sign. The Passover, uh, the sign of the Passover was uh, the Passover meal that God gave. Says, uh, put the blood on the post. Amen. Pentecost. Put the blood on the, the Passover on the doors. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Amen. And also the Noadic covenant, when Noah was on Mount Sinai, God gave them a covenant. The sign was that they began to observe the Sabbath and to keep it holy. But even those covenants, which took place hundreds of years with Moses over 1,300 years later, couldn't have taken place had God not been faithful to this covenant. We cannot underestimate the importance of the Noadic covenant. The Noadic covenant in its importance is just, it's, to me, it's the same reason why we fight for life. Reason we oppose planned parenthood and we oppose all who are in favor of abortion is because we understand that without life, there's nothing. See, see unless, unless people would have lived, the Bible says Christ came to his own and his own received him not. Had God not made the Noadic covenant, there would have been no own for him to come to. You don't hear me. You see. And Jesus is coming again. But there would be nothing to come back here for. Had the Lord not been faithful to the covenant that he gave um, to Noah. The Noadic covenant is the reason at the end of the day that we're all here today uh, because without it, we've couldn't, we wouldn't have existed. So I was talking to someone about abortion the other day, and they said, well, you know, some people, um, you know, I guess some people argue that some of the people who were aborted, well, not everybody who's aborted would have grown up to be a, a, a doctor or a lawyer. Some people grow up to be criminals and all that. I said, yeah, but you can't grow up, you can't even grow up to be that. You, you can't, you can't, you don't get, you don't get the choice. You can't even grow up to get shot by the police. See, without life, there is nothing. The Hebrew language does not distinguish between the rainbow and the bow as a weapon. Uh, the the uh, Hebrew word is kiseth. And kiseth means bow. And uh, as was mentioned Thursday night, and you heard it uh, so pro prolifically mentioned in the poem, that God's rainbow is a bow without an arrow. And a radical interpretation of divine power is that the bow ceased to function as a sign of God's military and began to function as a sign of God's grace. Every time you see it, you ought to say to yourself, my Lord, God is good. Doesn't matter what kind of day you're having. Doesn't matter what, uh, how bad things may be. Say, well, preacher, it's not my day. I'm having a bad day. But you have a day. Were it not for the bowl, we wouldn't have a day. Thank God for good days and bad. It's a blessing uh, to be alive. Say amen. So uh, it, it's a sign of God's grace. Now, when it comes to dealing with the colors of the rainbow, before we look at the individual colors, are you with me, of the rainbow, we need to keep in mind the function and the purpose of the rainbow in and of itself as a whole. I am not a leg, I, nor am I a hand. I'm not a head. 
I am a man. I have two legs. I have two hands. I have one head, but I am a person. Praise the Lord. And before you dissect me to try to ascertain the individual purposes of uh, these organs and these parts that make up my body, you first need to understand who I am and what I am. I am a person. The greatest revelation, if you're looking for some deep meaning, the greatest revelation of the rainbow is what God himself said about the rainbow. And when he said what he said about the rainbow, he did divide it into different colors. God said something. The rainbow reminds me of what the God of the Bible said about the human race. The Bible says this in Acts chapter 17, verse 26 through 28. And hath made of one blood all nation of men for to dwell on the face of the earth. And have determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. That they, the one race of people, the human race, should seek the Lord. If happily they, may, they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him, we, the entire human race, live, move, and have our being. Isn't that amazing? Wouldn't it be something if we all recognize this fact first? Before we, before we get to black or white, red or yellow, Male or female? Wouldn't it be something if we just realized that we're one human species? We're the human homo sapien. We're the human race. Praise the Lord. If we fully understood this, it would put, it would put racism out of business. It would put, uh, praise the Lord, abortion out of business. I'll tell you this, it would put lesbianism and homosexuality and this transgender, which is, which is a lie, because, I mean, really, that, that statement is a lie. Now, we say it, but the statement is a lie, because trans means when, you, when a thing is transitory, it's moving, you're changing it. The truth is, you can't change your gender. You can, you can cut off body parts. You can cut a groove in an area where there weren't one. You can, you, can, you can remove certain fatty tissue from your chest area. And you can put false uh, padding in. And you can take pills that alter your testosterone level. And alter your estrogen levels. And put on a wig and put on makeup. But when you are finished, you are still a man and still a woman. You're just a mutilated man and a mutilated woman. Praise the Lord. If you don't believe me, run out of pills. And see, really, really what we're dealing with we're dealing with, and, 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 and you don't like me when I talk like this, because uh, most preachers won't talk about it. We're dealing with a pathology. See, transgenderism, that's a sickness. That's, that's demonic. That's, that's a pathology. And, and what they won't tell you, what the doctors won't tell you, it is in law books, it is in the medical profession, labeled as a pathology today. Uh, the psychologists know that there is, it is psychological. How can you, how can you sit there and, and everything about you say man and you argue that you're a woman? Everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or everything about you uh, say woman and you argue that you're a man. And, and, and that be viewed as reasonable. And then the great, the great travesty that's done to these suffering people. 
is then the rest of society begins to go along with the pathological, psychological disorder. So the rest of us now began to uh, pretend. We look at Bruce Jenner and says, how are you, Caitlin? It's an honor to meet you when you know you're talking to Bruce. He was born Bruce. He will die Bruce. The, cho the chromosome says Bruce. You swab his mouth. Bruce come back. That's Bruce. And them feet say Bruce. Those hands say Bruce. That's Bruce. That's Bruce. That's Bruce. Bruce, 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 Bruce. Bruce. Amen. And catch him on the right day when he, for, when he forgets, he says Bruce. Right. Guaranteed. He's he walking down the aisle, walking down the aisle. Hey, Bruce. He looks back. He looks back. He, got, he got to catch himself. Say, oh, no, no, I'm not, I'm not Bruce. I'm Caitlin. Do, do you not know that they actually take people? So I'm not, listen, I'm, I'm teaching you, even though, even though you may laugh, let me tell you something. People who have that, 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 that disorder, the doctors won't operate until right. they go through a certain period of time That's right. being trained That's right. to where it's second nature. They got to be trained. So I, I didn't have to be trained to be a man. Nobody taught me how to walk like this. I didn't take a class on how to move my hands. I didn't take a class on walking with my shoulders and not with my hips. That came natural. natural. See, the woman walks with her hips. Oh, Lord. The man walks with his shoulders. It's a symbol of his strength. Say amen. But they, they, they have to be trained because it's a disorder. Wouldn't it be something if all people understood that God made us male and that God made us female, it would save us a lot of trouble. It would save a lot of uh, a division. Uh, it, it, it would even cause us to recognize truth as truth. See, what I just said right now, do you know what people call what I just told you? They call it hate. The true science deniers are on the left. They're the, they, they call those of us who hadn't bought into global warming and those of us who don't believe that it is, it's the cause uh, causing uh, it to be a little warmer and a little cold. And if you pay attention to what they're saying, things haven't changed as much because they, they'll tell you right now, oh, it hasn't been this hot uh, since 1950. And there you go say, oh my God, something is wrong. Well, it can't be wrong because it was this hot in 1950. So we're in 2019. So if it's 1950, it was, was, it, was it the end of the world then in 1950? See, so all you got to do is think a little bit. But these same people who will sell you on global warming will deny will tell you that a man can turn himself into a woman. And Ruth Bader Ginsburg said the other day, uh, you're talking about science denier, said a pregnant woman who is seeking an abortion is not a mother. Now, at what point is a pregnant woman not a mother? Since when can a pregnant woman decide that she's not a mother? Because if you are pregnant, a pregnant female, by definition. What, will anybody tell me what a mother is? A mother is a female. First of all, it's got to be a female. Not a person. A female. If you're talking about humans now, I'm not talking about the animals. A female who is impregnated with a child. And she don't become a mother after she gives birth. She's a mother the moment. Conception takes place. Mary was the, was the mother of Jesus when she was visiting Elizabeth, the mother of John, while both were in their mother's womb. 
So don't, 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 look, don't tell me uh, about science. The fools, the, the fools are the ones who are trying to get us to believe lies and to, I, I might not get to the colors today, and, uh, uh, and to accept fallacies. Fallacies. But if we all understood that God made the human race, and God made the human race male and he made them female, and then God beautified the human, human race by giving us different shades and tones That's and right. colors. Right. Amen. Amen. And, and there are things that make us different and there are things that make us alike, but the things that make us alike is that we're all equally human. Yeah. You, know, you, know, you know we got to physically be more alike than different because organs can be transplanted. Within people. Amen. In, in, in the medical, they don't, they don't take, okay, now this is a heart. And this heart came from a, a, a black person who's tragically been killed. This is a heart. We can only transplant this heart in another black person. Or this is a, these are kidneys from, this kidneys from a white person. And the only way we can give that kid, we got to give it to another white person. You can't, can't put a white man's kidney in a black man. No, 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 no. And if you cut us off, we all bleed red. Wouldn't it be something if people understood these things? But I, 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 can't, I can't get a witness. You, you, you all was happy on Jesus' pride, but now I guess I'm making you angry. Genesis chapter 9, verse 13 through uh, 17 is our text where the Lord says I set my bow in the cloud the rainbow now listen to me now is a type for Christ in that when we look at the rainbow we know according to the text that God the father is also looking at the rainbow and therefore it becomes a bridge that brings us, God and man, together. Because remember, God says, I set my bow in the sky. And when I look at it, I will remember the covenant that I made. Well, I set it in the sky for people to see it. So when we look at it, we know that God is looking at it. So therefore, it brings us together together with God. So the next time you see a rainbow, you ain't got to wonder what God is looking at. So I wonder what God is paying attention to right now. Among other things, he's looking at that rainbow because he said when he put the bow in the sky, he will look at it. And then, and then you know what he's thinking when he looks at it. He remembers the covenant. I can't let a storm come up that is so big that it will destroy all human beings. The Bible says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19 through 21, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Just as the rainbow brings us together, God was in Christ and have committed to us the ministry of reconciliation. Mm. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ and as though God did beseech you by us. It says when you hear us telling you to come to, come to the Lord, that's God speaking through our voice. We pray you in Christ's stead, that is, on the behalf of Jesus Christ, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him, Jesus Christ, sin for us. Jesus, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And you know what? That was a unilateral move. John 3, 16 is unilateral. It says, for God so loved the world. Nobody acted but him. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth on him, 
unilateral, should not perish. He gave Jesus. And, and I tell you, it's a good thing God didn't uh, run a survey. For had God run a survey and asked the world, what can I do? Ask man, what is it that you would have me to do to help you most? No one would have said, give your son for me. Let your son come and die. We would have asked for riches and said, Lord, make everybody rich. Lord, make everybody powerful. God, do this. God, do that. But they would not have said, uh, give your son for me. Amen. You see, and, and, and if you look at Exodus chapter 12 and verse 13, you see where the Lord says, when I see the blood. Uh, this, 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 this rainbow is a type. It says, when I see the blood. I'll pass over you. Exodus 12 and 13 says, And the blood shall be to you for a, look at this, token. A sign upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be up upon you to destroy you when I smite. The land of Egypt. What a mighty God we serve. Jesus is the bridge that brings God and man together. 1 John 2, 1 through 2 says this. My little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. But if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. That is, we have a helper. We have a mediator who is at the Father's right hand. If we sin, we have somebody sitting at the right hand of the Father. Who is that to speak on our behalf? His name is Jesus Christ the righteous. That is Jesus Christ the righteous one sits at the right hand of the Father to speak on our behalf. And he is the propitiation for our sins. To propitiate, to propitiate means to come into good favor. See, when once, once somebody fall out, something has to be done uh, to, to bring you back together again. That thing, that process is called propitiation. Or to perpetuate. Well, Jesus is our perpetuation. Good God Almighty. He's the one who causes us to be brought back into good favor with God. Jesus' death on the cross satisfied the just demands that sin be punished. See, the reason why that was a problem. When man sinned, God's righteousness demanded that sin be punished. Well, Jesus came, the righteous one, and died in our place. And what he did for us, praise the Lord, on a voluntary basis, praise the Lord, he volunteered for it, said to the Father, behold, it is written in the volume of the book, it is written of me, it says, prepare a, a body, me a body, and I will go down and and our redeeming, Jesus did it voluntarily. Paul said that Jesus, in the state that he was in before he came to this planet, said he thought it not robbery to be equal with God. That meant that equality with God the Father was not something that Jesus had to forcibly take because he had it already. And yet being equal with God the Father, the Bible says they didn't say that the Father did it. The Bible says Jesus did it to himself. The Bible says he made himself of no reputation. And he took on the form of a servant and came to earth and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. When Jesus did that, that thing moved God the Father so that God have highly exalted him. And given Jesus a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus Christ. Every knee should bow. And every tongue shall confess. Of things in heaven. Of things on earth. 
and the things below the earth that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That what Jesus did on the cross was so great that no matter what sin a man sins, if he confess his sin, Jesus being our advocate sitting at the right hand of the Father says, Father, on my behalf, because of what I did, would you please forgive him? Good God Almighty. So he is the perpetuation for our sins and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Can I give you another example? I'm going to preach in just a minute. You all bring my monitor up a little bit. My voice is weak today. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 1 through 2, it says, therefore being justified, justified, that is made just, made righteous, praise the Lord, justified. With all of our shortcomings in here, because we're under the blood of Jesus, we're all justified, made righteous. Jesus did not justified by acts, but justified by faith. The Bible says we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now let me, let me, let me unpack peace with God. That means freedom to enter into the presence of the Lord whenever we want to. And when we enter into his presence because we are justified by faith, God, when we come before him, God gives us his golden scepter. See, in biblical times, if you went before the king and the king did not extend his scepter, and if you said something without the scepter being extended, off your head went. Remember when uh, uh, Esther went before the king. If you read uh, Esther chapter 5 verse 2, you will see where uh, the king and, 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 and she was his wife, Queen Esther. The king had to give her permission to speak. And the king stretched out his golden scepter and Esther touched the scepter. Well, we have peace with God. How did we get, how did we get this privilege? Uh, through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we also have access by faith into his grace. Now, let me talk to you about that access by faith. Are you following me? Access by faith. The word access there literally means introduction. It means as we approach God the Father, when we're praying and talking to him, that Jesus Christ, our advocate, says to God the Father, uh, they're mine. They're mine. And they have a right to be heard. And uh, when we die and we go to heaven and we're before God, Jesus speaks up for us. So he said, he's mine. And so he has a right. He or she has a right to be here. See, we have a right to call on his name. We have access by faith into his grace. Wherein we stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Amen. Hebrews 12, 25, the last clause says this about Jesus, that he ever liveth to make intercessions. Jesus is interceding on my behalf right now. Jesus is interceding on your behalf right now. As the devil talked of, talk about, bring up all of our shortcomings, and we all have them. Jesus is saying, yes, but they're mine. And they've been covered in my blood. Thank you, Jesus. We have access to God. And because uh, we've been introduced to God the Father, Jesus Christ, like the rainbow sign, brings us together. Isaiah 53 and 12 says, Therefore will I divide him, prophesying about Jesus, a portion with the great. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he hath poured out his soul unto death and he was numbered with the transgressors. Two sinners was on the cross and he bare the sins of many and made intercessions for the transgressors. 
Thank you, Lord, for interceding on my behalf. Romans 8 and 27 says, And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercessions for the saints according to the will of God. What a mighty God we serve. Romans 8 and 34 says, Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, it, it, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God and who maketh intercessions for us. What a mighty God we serve. Then Jesus said this, Jesus being like the rainbow who brings us and God together in my Father's house. There are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And uh, that where I am, there ye may be also. The truth is, because of Jesus, all of us who are saved, regardless of what we're going through, every one of us are going to end up at the Father's house. So if anybody asks you where you're headed, I'm headed to my Father's house. God Almighty, Jesus, and Jesus is bringing us to the Father's house. Thank you, Lord. Jesus brings God and man together. And see, the, the, the rainbow sign, the hallelujah, that was the sign that God gave and said, uh, when I put this rainbow up there, this natural effect, every time I see it, I'll remember what I promised. I'll remember what I promised. So before I deal with the colors, and I won't get to all of them now, I'm almost through preaching. Uh, Paul said this. Remember, I told you, I'm, I'm a human being. Paul said this. Paul said, for the body is one, and it has many members. And all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. Uh, so also is Christ. 1 Corinthians 12 and 12 and the 14th verse says, for the body is one member, uh, but many. For the body is not one member, but many members. There are many members that make up the body but it makes up the body. Well, there are many colors that make up the rainbow. But uh, while we investigate the colors, don't ever forget that the rainbow is the sign of God's grace and the sign of God's mercy. And don't ever forget that the rainbow, every time you see it, it tells you that trouble won't last always. And that no matter how hard it may be raining in your life, it tells you that the storm is going to cease and the sun is going to shine again. Oh, I'm glad to know, good God Almighty, that trouble don't last always. Because in this world we're living in, we all have to contend with some tough realities. All have to, have to contend with things uh, that will bring tears from your eyes, that will have tears meeting under your chin. But isn't it good to know that we serve a God who specializes in wiping our tears away? Ooh, Jesus, thank you for being my helper. Thank you for being my strength. Thank you, oh God for being my bridge over troubled waters. And the reason is so important that we push back against those who want to claim the rainbow. Thank you, Jesus, is that if we give them this, sooner or later, they'll come for the cross and the devil is a liar. I wonder today, do I have any believers who are ready to stand their ground and not give an inch to the devil, who will not, uh, in the name of political correctness, in the name of going alone to get alone, in the name of gaining the approval of the world, who will stand and say, I will not compromise my faith, but I'm gonna stand with the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords, I know the wrath 
midst of the world may come against me. I know the storm of Hollywood may come down upon me. I know about the evil things that they can say on social media. I know how the media tries to make Christians look like dunces and fools. I know how the devil can be mean and cruel, but I thank God that I also know that I serve a God who knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation. I serve a God who told me that no temptation have taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation, could God Almighty send a way of escape so that you can bear it? Isn't it good to know that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Somebody lift your hands and praise God for the rainbow. Somebody lift your hands and praise the Lord for his faithfulness. Yes! Yes! When the sun came up this morning, God has kept his word again. And when the sun goes down this evening, God has kept his word again. Here we are in the summer. He kept his word again. And if he delay is coming, the fall will show up. He kept his word again. Winter will come. Spring will be sprung. The Lord, ah, the Lord, he's always showing himself faithful showing himself good, showing himself strong on our behalf. L lift your hands and praise the Lord for his goodness, for his kindness, for his tender mercy. I get about just just a few hundred of you to say he's been good to me. He's been good to me. It's the reason why I got to celebrate him is because he's been good to me. The reason why I identify with him is because he's good to me. I know they're marching in San Francisco. Oh, it's an ugly thing. Men kissing men. Men exposing their erect naked genitalia. Women walking down the street confused, looking like men. Men dressed in drag, all that stuff, and people cheering them on. Well, here I am, and here we are on the East Coast, and we got to cheer. We say, right on, King Jesus. Right on, King Jesus. Ah, Lord, oh Lord, you're my hope, you're my joy, you're my Lord, you're my King, and I praise you. Yeah, yeah, Lord. Woo. I need a few sanctified people. To praise the King of Kings. <laughs> Let me, with the little time I have remaining, I think I got three minutes. I won't go through all of them, but I'll just hit the first one. The colors of the rainbow. Well, I, I won't necessarily say that it's the color of the rainbow, but it's the color red in the Bible. Now, I just made a sharp theological distinction. For when God showed us the bow, he 
he didn't make a distinction in the colors he did not he presented it as one thing one bow all of the colors made up one bow but in the bible the color red the color red stands for the blood of jesus i've been washed in the blood of the lamb oh do i have anybody here who can say the blood that jesus shed for me the blood that he shed on calvary it will never ah, never lose never never ah, never never lose his power Everybody here who's been washed in the blood of the Lamb. I'm through preaching, but you ought to hug somebody. And tell them, I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. It changed my mind. It changed my heart. It changed my soul. It washed away. All my sin, hey, and I'm on my way to heaven because of the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, yeah, yeah, oh, Set your soul on fire. Won't it set your soul on fire? Do you have the fire? Fire! 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 Ah, I wish somebody's soul would catch on fire. Catch on fire. Catch on fire. With somebody's soul would burning. Whoa! Well, I wish somebody's soul would. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Said I wish somebody's soul would burning. One more time, I wish somebody's soul would. Somebody's soul would burning, 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 burning with the Holy gonna go we're gonna deal with the colors I have the work done but in, I intentionally went this way because see as a preacher who prides himself in being theologically correct see you have to be careful when you go further than God went he made a bow 
Now, in, in the search of deep, deeper meaning, which I mean, when he, tell, when he told you what it was for, I mean, that's kind of deep enough. But in the search of deeper meaning, we can deal with the colors in the rainbow because they're represented in Scripture. But after we deal with those colors, what the rainbow sign means, yes, he will not destroy the earth like he has before. He won't curse the ground like he did before. And this promise wasn't simply to the eight people. He preached this promise to eight people. To the eight people because, you know, the rest of the human race have been destroyed. And the animals on the, that were on the ark, he preached it to the living and to the unborn generations to come. That's right. And he was faithful to Noah. Yes. And this was a year later right. when the storm hit in the six, 100, 600th year of his life. He was 601 was when the, he was 601 years old when God made the promise. But the promise was to you and to me. He saw that we would come. And I thank the Lord. I thank the Lord. And you know what? You, can, you are well within your biblical, theological license. You are well within biblical expectations to say, Lord, I can take the promise that you gave to Noah, the Noahic promise, and not only apply it to my life, with regards to the natural seasons. But I can also apply it to my life with regard to the seasons of struggle, the seasons of temptations, the things that come. For the Bible speaks of due season. The Bible says, let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, seasons, seasons, we will reap if we faint not. He said to the preacher who goes through persecutions, preach the word in season and out of season. God Almighty. Some, somebody's going through a tough season. And I'm here to say on this finale of Jesus' pride, God, oh, for you today, it's, it's the sign that your season is about to shift and you, you've done you've gone through that season and the Lord is going to bless you if you believe it meet me at the altar right now glory